Now, I'm one of those people who doesn't believe that trim level makes a van. In fact, I see it more as the icing on the cake. And nowhere is that more obvious than on a van like the Renault traffic at the Sport trim level. Now, it's built on the same platform as the old Vauxhall Vivaro, and it's great to see that the platform still has a lot of life left in it. So anyway, let's get started and give it its very own Vanarama road test. Now before we get started, I'd just like to say that I sincerely hope you enjoy this video and if you do, don't forget to like it, subscribe to the channel and click the bell to get notified whenever we post new content just like this. And if you are in the market for a brand new van, pickup truck or car, head to vanorama.com. Okay, let's start at the front where we always do. And I mean, just take it in. At the sport level of trim, you get all this chrome accentation across the grille, and it really sets off the front end. It's just a really nice looking van. In fact, someone I was speaking to just before we started filming said, that is a pretty looking van. And do you know what? I have to agree. I might not have used the word pretty, but it really does look great. It's a very nice thing. You can imagine yourself pulling up on site with this van and just feeling quite confident about it. In fact, confident is a word that I would use to describe pretty much the whole van itself. It's a very confident looking van. Now just check out the grille. As I said, there's all these chrome accentations, this lovely great big badge up there. And down the bottom, you've got the body color bumper, which kind of looks like a bit of a sporty splitter to go with that sport trim level name. And you get that nice honeycomb plastic just there, which I think really sets off the front end. It's a great looking vehicle. Under the bonnet, you've got a great big two liter diesel engine, very efficient. And I'll cover that in more detail in the Rotex. Let's have a look at these headlights. I mean, just look at the size of them. They are absolutely massive. You've got some proper bulb lights down here, but up here you've got what Renault call the LED pure vision lights, and they increase your visibility massively. Those headlights are also automatic, so in low light conditions, they will pop on when you need them. You don't even have to press a button. Very, very cool. Follow me around, check out those big 17 inch alloy wheels. Renault calls that Cyclade. I don't know what a Cyclade is, but that's what they call them. And I think they just add a really nice look to the vehicle. And it goes right along with that sport trim level, the Renault Traffic Sport. It's got sporty alloy wheels. Check out the door mirrors. Those are nice and big as well. And they're body colored to go along with that trim level. I'm a big fan of these. These are electrically adjustable and they're heated as well. Just a little bit more bang for your buck right there. And generally the profile of the vehicle is very nice. You've got some tough black plastic down the edge right there. That just means that any damage is gonna be absorbed by them, not the metalwork. So there we go. Very, very cool. But this is a business van. Not only does it look good, it also works well too. So let's go around the back and start at the business end. And the back end of the Renault Traffic Sport looks just as good as the front in my opinion with these great big light pillars on either side of the doors. Now these doors are a 50-50 split and they open up to the normal 90 degrees, just like that, release that catch down there. And if you disengage the slam locks, they open up to a full 180 degrees. Now, a lot of other vans on their slam locks, it's just a metal catch. But on the Renault Traffic Sport, it's actually these black plastic handles right here. This one here and this one here. So you're not gonna have to touch this. You're not gonna have to get oil over your fingers or put your hand in harm's way. Really, really nice solution. Okay, so the aperture is 1.4 meters wide. It's 1.3 meters high. And that opens up to 1.6 meters wide at its widest point and between the arches slims to just around 1.2 meters wide, which is perfect for Euro pallets. Now, 1.3 meters high on the door is reflected all the way down from the front to the back. This is the L2 H1 version of the Renault Traffic, which means that it is the lowest height setting, but the longest loading bay length, which is three meters. I'm gonna go around to the side door because I'll be able to show you a feature that expands the length of this loading bay brilliantly. The opening of the side sliding door is one meter wide and 1.2 meters high, which means that it's not necessarily wide enough to slide a Euro pallet in from the side, but if you do need to just shove one in for storage, you'll get it in no problem. And three meters long and a payload of 1200 kilograms is great for a medium van, but what if you need a little bit of extra room? Well, it's got a load through and a lot of medium vans do have them, but Renault in the sport trim level on the traffic have a nice little solution. Now, usually they get these little hatches held in place with a toggle or a catch of some sort, but Renault decided to keep it simple. You simply open it up here, 
and it's held in place by magnets. I think that's really, really cool. And of course, opening that hatch extends the length of your loading bay by about half a meter into the cabin. And there's a little hatch underneath the passenger seat, which gives you even more length. Now that is really great. And speaking of the cabin, let's head there right now. Oh. Now, the cabin of the Renault Traffic Sport is where that trim level, I think, really comes alive. Now, you've seen some stuff on the outside, you've seen some stuff in the back, but this is where it all kind of comes together. You've got nice, tough black plastic, and you've got it in all sorts of different styles. You've kind of got this kind of dark gray on the steering wheel, and it all carries over to the dashboard, but you do have some nice glossy black plastic around the radio, and you've also got this kind of brushed aluminum trim as well. Now let's start with the seats. The driver's seat is very, very comfortable, and the passenger seats are just as comfortable, if you ask me. Now this level of fabric trim is called Java. So if you like coffee and you like sitting on stuff that's named after coffee, you'll be right at home in the front of the Renault Traffic Sport. This is your Java seat, enjoy it. Okay, so the steering wheel. It's kind of that dark gray plastic, but this is leather. So leather is everywhere that you would hold, and it actually makes for a very nice and grippy steering wheel. It's a little bit of class, and again, because this is the top trim level, it's kind of what you expect. I really like how the white stitching sets it all off. It looks really nice, and again, it's very comfortable to hold. It's also a very nice looking steering wheel, and it doesn't feel too crowded with buttons. In fact, all you've got are the switches that you need to control cruise control. On the left-hand side, you've got your speed selector, and on the right-hand side, you've got resume, or cancel. You have one more button beyond the horn, and that is to use voice control. So if you've got your phone hooked up, if you've got an iPhone, you can use Siri, and if you've got an Android phone, you can use Google Assistant, just by pressing that button right there. It's very good. So where are all those controls? Well, they've actually been migrated to a little stalk just behind the steering wheel. And on that, you've got your volume controls, you've got your phone controls, and you've got a rocker switch to move through all of your options on the driver display and on the display right here in the middle of the dashboard. Okay, so steering wheel's very comfortable. You've got your usual controls just behind it on your stalks right here, and then you've got this lovely, great big dashboard, and it's a little different. Instead of having a rev counter and a speedometer, you've actually got on the right-hand side your fuel gauge, on the left-hand side you've got your rev counter, and right in the middle is a big digital speed display, which is very nice and very clear. Black background with white digital readouts. Below that you've got some indicator lights which show you when doors are open, and when you're stopped, and when you've got your handbrake on, and when you need some maintenance done on the vehicle. And right above it is a very small driver information display, but it is still very clear. Okay, so that's this area. Let's move along to this bit that's sticking out right here. This is a cradle for your mobile phone. Now, you've seen them before, but this one has some nice little features. Now, not only at the sport trim level, is it great to have somewhere to actually put your phone, a dedicated station that actually holds your phone, but this one is again showing Renault's thinking outside the box. Instead of just having a cradle and all your cables and stuff dangling around all over the place, they've actually cut a notch into the back, which is where you can stuff the cables and keep them out of harm's way. It's good thinking from Renault. Here is the massive infotainment screen. It's really nice to see something like this in a Renault Traffic van. If you remember the old Vauxhall Vivaros, they didn't usually have these, but the Renault Traffic, because this is still here, it's still loud and still proud, it's right there. You've got a button at the top which turns the screen on and off, you've got your volume controls in the middle, and to the right of that you've got a USB socket and an AUX socket as well, which is where you can hook your phone up to charge it, or you know, play your media, play your songs, whatever you need to do right through there. The infotainment screen itself has got a lot of options. You've got your radio options. You've also got your media in, which is when you've got a device hooked up to it. You've got all your phone settings right there. You've got a map so you can see where you are, but if you want to as well, you can engage the satellite navigation system, which allows you to search for points of interest or in fact put addresses in and find exactly where you want to go. And you've got general settings, which are for volume, loudness, your balance, uh, whether you want a bit more bass, a bit more treble, everything's controlled from right there. Below that, you've got all your climate control setting, you've got your airflow, you've got your fan speed, and you've even got your temperature right here. And it has air conditioning as well, you can just engage that by pressing the button, and you can even just turn the fan on whenever you're sitting around and just need to warm the interior of the van up. The heaters in here are very efficient, and they get that temperature nice and warm on a cold day, just like this one. Below those controls, you've got your hazard light button, which is great. 
There you go, nice and flashes on and off, and you've got your lock switch just to the right of that. Now around the screen you've got all sorts of other buttons too. Right here you've got a blank button, and right next to it, curiously enough, you seem to have a demister switch for a rear window, which, um, well, we don't actually have, so uh, not sure why that's there. To the right of the screen, you've got your cruise control settings and also your stop-start button. So you can turn off the engine stop-start function if you like. I personally would keep it on because it means that you save a bit of fuel. To the right of that, you've got some more cruise control settings and also your speed limiter settings as well. There's a blank space here but I believe it's either for a 12 volt socket or probably a engine stop start button if uh, indeed you go for keyless ignition. You've got a 12 volt socket to the left, which is always nice to see. It's got a nice little cover on it, which lifts up very easily. And then we're down to this area right here, the console on which the gear stick and in fact the eco mode button is right there. That's very good. That just helps you save even more fuel when you're out and about. Okay, so the gear stick, very nice. It's got some sporty trim around it, that kind of brushed aluminium. It's got kind of leather lining down here, which makes it look just a little bit more classy. And the gear stick itself is very nice and very easy to use. It's got a collar just underneath it, because if you want to whack it into reverse, you're gonna have to whack your foot down on the clutch, lift the collar, and there you go. And that beep shows you that it's got reverse parking sensors, which is a great addition to an already pretty great package. You've got your handbrake down here, which is nice and firm, very easy to use, which is right underneath your armrest right there. Now I'm going to move this out of the way, because there's a few things I want to show you which is going to need that out of the way, but it's great to know that you've got an armrest. If you're on a long journey, there's nothing better than sitting back with your cruise control on and just resting your arm because that arm gets tired, because that's the one you're going to be wiggling that around with. Okay, so let's move on to general cabin storage. Now you've got some good cup holders. You've got this one down here. I've stashed my coffee cup in here, but as you can see, it's not really holding it in place. The better ones are by far up here. You've got one on the driver's side, and you've got one on the passenger side as well. Along the top of the dashboard, you've got above the infotainment screen this nice deep cubby. Now I'm moving forward just a little bit because it does go all the way back and it's got a nice texturized rubber bottom, meaning things won't slide around too much, and that's great. To the left of that, just above the main glove box, you've got a little hatch that lifts up and is held in place. And it's quite a shallow cubby. It's got the same texturized rubber on the bottom of it, but it's actually quite small. To be fair, it's the one time I've actually looked at something in the Renault Traffic Sport and gone, huh, I'm not really sure what I'd put in there. But it's nice to know that you've got somewhere secure to put some things if you do want to. You've got a little gap here, which is just for stashing stuff. Again, it's got that kind of texturized rubber bottom again. It's got a little bit of a lip. Um, I'm not really sure what you'd stick in there, maybe a couple of chocolate bars or something. They won't go anywhere, but just don't break or accelerate too hard, otherwise they might fly up over that lip. And now onto the glove box. Very nice and deep, and I love it when a glove box lid opens all the way to the bottom like that, because it means you've got massive, massive room to get in and get some access, and you've got all sorts of stuff in here. You've got your manual, you've got some, we've got some of our delivery notes, but this is the difference. Instead of just giving you a locking wheel nut just stashed somewhere on its own, they actually come in a nice plastic box because this is the sport trim level. They thought of everything. You've also got some further storage underneath the passenger bench seat. There you go, both of these lift up all nice and easy. Very nice and secure. Now that's also where things load through. If you open up the hatch in the back, they go underneath the passenger seat. And there's actually a little hatch under here if I just lift this up that's where you get even more length. Now, if you didn't want to use that hatch, you could actually just stash a laptop or your lunch under there or any other valuables. That's a really great place to keep them. I'm just gonna put those down because there is one more thing I want to show you. Up here, you've got a wide view mirror which you can drop down and it gives you a great look at where the curb is. If you're parking the vehicle up and you're not sure where the curb is, just remember, drop that visor down You've got a nice wide view mirror which shows you all the way down onto the ground. Very clever, nice addition Renault. Very, very, very good. Okay, here we go, the pièce de résistance. If you just release this catch just here, this seat folds down and who knew what was stashed under here was a full-fledged clipboard that you can actually disengage from the back of the seat. You can use it as a clipboard if you've got deliveries or you need people to sign for things. Or if you're one of those people who still prints out their directions, you can mount it right here. So while you're driving along and you've got some directions that you just need to stop, you need to pull over and have a look at, you can keep everything right there. What a great little addition. But that's not all. Release that catch and your mobile office is suddenly revealed. You've got a nice rubberized bottom here and you've actually got 
a Velcro strap here to hold anything that you've stashed in there from rolling around too much. You just flick everything back in, you disengage these buttons here, you can put your clipboard away, and that's it, your mobile office. I mean, just look around this cabin, from the phone holder to the clipboard on the back here to the little mobile office area, the storage, the infotainment system, the great leather steering wheel. It's really, really clear that Renault has just thought about the driver. This is a driver's van. It really, really sticks out amongst the competition. And speaking of the competition, let's take a look at some of the other medium vans available right now in the medium van sector. First up, it's the Vauxhall Vivaro Citroen Dispatch Peugeot Expert and Toyota Pro Ace. Now, this group is a bit of a mixed bag with plenty of choice of tech and looks, even without the option of different heights. However, the BSA Group and Toyota have done a great job giving each one a different vibe despite sharing the same platform. The Nissan NV300 and Fiat Talento. Now, this bunch of traffic relatives have an edge with different heights available, but their payloads do need a bit of work. Overall, there's a lot to be said about this bunch of hardworking vans, but the one you pick will depend on the features you prefer. The Mercedes-Benz Vito. Now, this is the luxury option. With tons of options available and variants to choose from, you will pay for the three spokes, but then don't you always. The VW Transporter. Anyone who knows me knows I love this van. It's great looking and incredibly user-friendly. Payload is, in my opinion, the only place it very slightly underperforms. And finally, the Ford Transit Custom. Now, you cannot talk about medium vans without mentioning the UK's best seller. It's the top performer because of price, function, and great running costs. It also is a bit of a looker. The King has a lot of life left in it with hybrid and all electric versions on the way. So there you go, all the competition that the Renault Traffic Sport is facing right now. But who gives a fig about the competition? I'm sat in the front of a Renault Traffic Sport. I've spoken about the cabin, I've spoken about the looks, and I've spoken about the loading bay. But how does it drive? Let's find out right now. So look, I'm not gonna sit here and say it feels like a sports car to drive, because it doesn't. It feels like I'm driving a medium van. But the sport trim level really does add all those bells and whistles for a reason, so that you feel comfortable while you're driving it. And the Renault traffic will not let you down in that area if you choose the sport trim level. Now look, the lower trim levels are absolutely fine. You do get bells and whistles with all of them, but at the sport level, you just get everything you need. So under the bonnet of the Renault Traffic Sport is a two litre diesel turbo injection engine. It's very nice, very fast, very efficient. It feels good to drive. That six speed gearbox that it's mated to makes the, all that power easy to distribute whenever you need it. You're sat at a roundabout or traffic lights and you need a little bit of power to pull away. First gear is great. It will pull you away very fast. And for a vehicle this long and heavy and capable of carrying 1200 kilograms it still feels nippy we're just driving up a hill at the moment the incline is about 25 degrees i'm in what am i in there it feels like fourth gear bags of power but then that's the sport for you underneath the bonnet is a two liter turbo diesel injection engine it can get from naught to 62 miles per hour in just 13.9 seconds shaving 1.1 seconds off of the VW Transporter's time. Now, being able to accelerate fast isn't necessarily something that you need a medium van to do, but it's nice to know that it can. It can reach a top speed of 103 miles per hour. Now, that is quite a top speed. Again, it, it adds a little bit more than the VW Transporter, which tops out around sort of 98. So it's five more miles an hour, but of course, traveling on UK roads at 103 miles per hour is illegal so don't do it. In fact, when you're in a medium van of this sort, your top speed limit should be around 60 miles per hour. And you're gonna reach that in 13.9 seconds, so that's pretty cool. It's also interesting to note that this is a stop-start engine, which just adds another tick in the box of the many reasons why you should consider a Renault Traffic Sport. That means that you're gonna get excellent ROI, excellent fuel consumption, because every time you stop at a traffic light or a roundabout, or something like that, the engine just cuts out. Saves you a bit of fuel, means you've got more for the drive ahead. And let's give it a little bit of welly. We're going into a 60 zone. Third gear, foot right down. Lots and lots and lots of response. I'm actually catching up to the chase car, which is a Jaguar X-Type 3.5 litre engine, and I am on its heels. 
Again, you're not going to necessarily need to use all that power all the time, but picture yourself in this situation, just about to get onto a dual carriageway. It's got a very tight, very short slip road. It's nice to know that if you're driving a Renault Traffic Sport, you can build up some speed before you hit that road. Confidence. That's what I think the Renault Traffic Sport offers. It's comfort, but confidence. Confidence is the most important thing whenever you're driving a vehicle of this size. In my review for the VW Transporter, I made a comment about how fast the heaters work. Now the heaters in the front of the Renault Traffic Sport are absolutely no different, they work very nicely, but actually I found it a lot easier to find a nice middle ground between overwhelmingly, stiflingly hot and absolutely clenchingly freezing. Now at the sport level, the Renault Traffic benefits from quite firm suspension, so that means that, as you can tell, I'm feeling the road. Now, I'm not feeling every bump, every pothole, or every little imperfection in the road surface, but I am feeling it. And actually that's nice, there's a little bit of confidence to be inspired from that as well, that I'm actually completely aware of the surface that I'm driving on. From country roads, to town roads, to city roads, even to bypasses or motorways, you have that lovely sense of awareness. A lot of vans are able to do this quite convincingly, but the Renault Traffic Sport, because I know I've got all that power under the hood as well, oh, it just makes me feel just a little bit more confident. Medium vans aren't often this fun to drive. If you get a Renault Traffic Sport, you will enjoy it. So how do we finish this one? Well, from everything you've seen, you can no doubt tell that Renault designed this van with the driver in mind. Its cabin is probably one of the best I've seen over the course of the reviews that we've made. And the loading bay is as practical as you'd expect. It's also really good looking. It's the whole package. So if you're looking for a medium van that does everything a medium van should, and has plenty of bells and whistles, and nice aesthetic extras, the Renault Traffic Sport, that's where it's at. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell to get notified whenever we post new content just like this. And if you'd like to see the top five things that we would give a big thumbs up to on the Renault Traffic Sport, click the link above.